Good morning, everybody. I toast you and all you do. I hope you're having a fantastic day today and that you are enjoying your winter. Or if you're in the southern hemisphere, your summer. It's just always an interesting phenomenon to think about. Mm. Anyways, we are going to talk about some very interesting things happening astrologically right now, as well as the full moon. And I'm very excited to be getting up a full moon video. I have not been able to get one done for a while because the full moon energy has... I find other things that I have to get done, really, I guess is what it comes down to. And I just don't find the time to sit down and make the videos. I typically have all of my research done. I just... You know, so my goal is to make sure I'm getting more of these done and getting them out earlier. Hey, hey, it's not the full moon today. So that, <laughs> you're doing so good. So let's talk about what's going on right now astrologically before we get into the full moon. I just feel like it is very pertinent to talk about these big things that are happening. And because they really do influence what's happening with the moon. And everything is kind of happening in correlation, connection with each other right now. As always, nothing happens in a vacuum. So the first thing we're going to talk about is Uranus is going stationary direct. It's moving very, very slowly through the sky right now, perspectively. I always hear that science brain that's like, Uranus didn't change. <laughs> Uranus didn't change direction. So we'll just, in case you haven't heard this before or you didn't know this, uh, retrograde is when we see from Earth's perspective the planet move backwards through the sky. No, the planet does not stop mid-orbit and change directions. This just has to do with the angle between the Earth, the Sun, and the planet and how we see them perspectively as we're all traveling in a cycle around the Sun. So the angles give the appearance of the planet moving backwards. And there's a lot of criticism you hear from people where they're like, oh, you're saying something that's not realistic and it just debunks everything that you're saying. Retrograde is a word that we use to put on this. Visually, this is what we see in the sky is that the planets start moving backwards across. Like if all night long you stood outside and you watched the sky move, you would see the stars all move just as the sun does across the sky. And you see the planets do the same thing until they're in retrograde. And then you'll see the planet come the other direction. So when we see Mercury in retrograde, we see it rising on the east instead of the west, which is really counterintuitive to all of the things that are happening in space. And no, Mercury, like I said, didn't change directions. It just is a different angle. And this creates different angles, different influences, different energies, different drops in the bucket of energy, however you want to see that, then causing that ripple out and affecting the energy around it. So with Uranus going stationary direct, we have Uranus's very eruptive and transformative energy felt very strongly because Uranus is able to sit in the same place and just admit emit its energy out into the universe and it's felt very strongly okay so I just have to say it's really funny so I just started this video this is the, several times I've started this clearly this is something that I have to say so one of the things that I personally do as someone who is both I, I love science I'm very into science but I'm also a very spiritual person and I often have times justifying the two things. How can you say that the energy of the universe and the gods dictates or influences or whatever to the, like creates this reality, but then also say that, you know, this is a molecule and this is science and test these theories. And astrology is one of those places where I can find a connection. If you look throughout history of all of the events that happen and you track the astrology and the movement of the planets through the universe, you begin to see patterns. You begin to see things that you can predict. You can say, okay, we had this major event happen astrologically. Now we have this energy that we're feeling on Earth, and then these things happen. 
and Uranus is one of the planets because of its eruptive nature and when its energy is felt or described on Earth, we talk about floods, we talk about eruptions, we talk about seismic activity, we talk about major things happening that cause big change. And if you look all around the Earth right now as we have Uranus slowing down and then going direct, stationary to direct, we have earthquakes we have all happening all over like the seismic activity has increased we see iceland is erupting um so thankful that we have the information we have now to be able to make sure that no one's in these areas and we can evacuate uh, but iceland is erupting and we have giant waves coming to california we have these measurable seeable experienceable non-magical spiritual things happening as this energy universally is happening so you can connect some of these dots now we cannot say with like scientifically proven evidence that every time uranus goes stationary or direct this happens sorry i was just thinking about that i feel like we could actually someone would just have to sit down and really do that research. And if somebody spent that time doing that research, we could probably find this pattern. That's why we say that the energy of Uranus is connected with this. We are seeing these patterns happen over time. And the astrology is, as I said, one of those areas where spiritually and magically I can make connections and correlations and see these patterns and be like, hey, this really does you know, just like natural plant medicine and the magic of plants, we can test some of that scientifically and see that they do do these things. They are antimicrobial, antibacterial. We can see that as Uranus goes stationary direct, we have these eruptive things happening on Earth. Now, I know some, you know, whatever for the naysayers. This energy also happens internally. So... Actually, here is some science for you. They can scientifically show through plants and humans that as the moon grows full, just as the water of the ocean rises and the science of the tides, you can see that inside plants and people. And it's a really cool science study. Look it up. I don't remember the author right this second. I have it written down somewhere. But you can see that scientifically, that this is something that's happening internally. And so these physical things happening are just a physical representation of the things that are also happening on a spiritual level. And so this eruptive energy of Uranus, we're going to feel it internally. We're going to feel like we need to make big dramatic changes. We're going to feel that energy coming from within. We're going to want to express ourselves. We're going to want to really stand up and say, hey, this is my voice. And I'm standing up to say something and it's going to just erupt out. Uh, you know, your person's big changes, creative changes, seeing things from like this different perspective and really experiencing something. Sure. I got so many notes here. This full moon has the energy right now has a lot going on. So I have a lot of notes. Uh, so, yes, aside from Uranus going stationary direct, we also have Pluto entering Aquarius. And this happens when the Sun and Pluto are actually conjunct. They're going to enter Aquarius together. We're going to step through that. I just keep hearing that song. It's the age of Aquarius. Um, and we are stepping into that energy very much so. And with the two of them stepping through that together, it's like the center of our universe and the outer parts of our universe moving into Aquarius together. Aquarius has a very, mm, I wouldn't say misunderstood, I just feel like it's one of the lesser known myths that we talk about. And also is like a very two-sided myth. So if you look into Greek mythology, Zeus came down as an eagle, stole the most beautiful boy in Troy, took him back up, and made him the god's uh, cupbearer. And he brought forth ambrosia, the drink of immortality, and 
was so beautiful and amazing that Zeus also made him a constellation. That way his also his father could see him. He was traded for some horses. It's an interesting myth, but it's about the life giving ability and the fruitfulness of water. It is also said that when Aquarius dips his vessel into the water he dips it into the nile and the nile then raises and we have the flooding of the nile which allows for irrigation and it's very connected to that life-giving energy if you go over to babylonian myth the babylonians believed that this constellation was a the almighty god who also flooded the earth and brought forth the great flood that removed pretty much most of humanity. Here's an interesting science kind of thing. Uh, if you look into 10,000 years ago, 12,000 years ago, between those eras, there was massive flooding all across the earth and many civilizations that were destroyed, buried, removed, uh, disappeared. And more and more new archaeological research is showing civilizations that do predate 10,000 years ago that are absolutely amazing and dating on like Machu Picchu dating of there's a temple in it might be Turkey I cannot remember or pronounce the name correct right this second but it also predates 10,000 years ago so we have these ancient civilizations that were wiped off by a great flood just interesting little piece of fact to go into this mythology, huh? Anyways, this is also in correlation with Noah and the Great Flood where God wiped away all of humanity because they were not doing a good job. And so this energy of Aquarius is very, I feel like it's just very all-encompassing. And more so that we have both the sun and Pluto stepping into this energy together. So the sun is highlighting this amazing nature of the life-giving, interconnected, like water is everywhere. And Pluto is bringing up the other side of that and that water can wash away everything from a little sand to a giant boulder, all indiscriminately. And it has all of these features it is all encompassing and we see the value in hmm, in humanity and it really does question humanity both the god, babylonian god a and the god of the bible sent these floods because humans weren't doing a good job they were failing at living and being good people there was whatever we all know the story of Noah. the same thing pretty much happened with the god a he came down he said you guys need to clean up your act nobody did and therefore he just was like i'm gonna flood and another god came down and saved some people and was like hey you guys are decent so we're gonna save you over here i just want you to know everybody else is gonna die and it's almost verbatim the same story. You see this in South America, you see this all over the place, but this great flood, this washing away of the old, this energy is something that is really being predominantly displayed right now. And with the disruptive, eruptive, transformative energy of Uranus, I feel like this is like a heavy hit as we start this cycle. Pluto will be in Aquarius for 20 years. It hasn't been in this place in our astrological cycle since 1777, 76, in that time period. And if you think historically what was going on back then and the like world revelations, revolutions, changes, big things that were happening, you know, it wasn't just, just so many beginnings of things happening. Um, so we really see this in the energy that's happening right now we see pluto and the sun stepping into aquarius and being like hey we're just preparing you like this is what's about to come we are about to really question our sense of humanity we are really about to see the truths of our humanity they're going to be brought to light and just like for the last 20 years we have been seeing the lights of our 
the lights, the darkness, the, the truths of our governments and this top-down structure that is very much represented by Capricorn and it's organized, determined, steadfast kind of energy. But we've been seeing the truths of that. We've been seeing the truths of governments all over the world. We had big economic problems all over the world because these truths are coming to light. People are seeing these realities and this was Pluto really bubbling up all of these truths, all of this like real reality. Like, let's see, what is this structure? What is this power really bringing us? What does, you know, one man up there on top really do to help everybody? As we step into Aquarius, we are now moving into an energy of questioning our humanity, of questioning who it is to be a good person, a good human, and what it is to live in a good society and be around a good community and what we want that to be. We had that square with Pluto and the North Node that has now broke up, but now the Sun and Moon are in this grand T-square, which we'll get to in a minute. But that square really was this like, okay, here are all the dirty secrets, here are all the deep dark truths, here's all of the things that you need to end this cycle and to step into this new one. And we are really at a place where we need to step forward into this new spiritual evolution. If you watch other astro astrology people or you talk to other spiritual people, you see a lot of this. Like, what is a spiritual awakening? What is this spiritual new, like, what are we doing here? And a lot of that is about this universal energy is pushing us to this next level. And I feel like we have a choice. We can either step forward spiritually and, and rise above and make better choices and be just and noble and do the right thing, just as Chiron and Eris and the North Node all together are really calling to. They're like, heal your past traumas, learn from the past, heal, move forward and better, and do it from a noble and just perspective do it from the high road from the righteous place like truly do it from that like not pretend righteousness or like oh i'm you know, no from really like this see the truth for what it is just as iris calls us to do and really step forward to be better and step forward in the spiritual evolution and aquarius comes in to remind us that if we don't do that then it's time to wash this away because we've gotten to the point I mean, if you look all over the world, it's really sad. I was actually told by someone not to get into it. So we're not going to get into that right now. But I'm just staying on track. <laughs> so Pluto and Aquarius are really calling on that humanity. So when you watch the news, when you step out into the world, when you vote, when you make decisions, when you buy things, do they reflect the humanity that you feel we should represent as a species you know we can draw lines we can pretend we're all different we can say oh culturally or racially or sexually or whatever line we want to draw when it comes right down to it we're all humans regardless of what superficial thing we want to put down on it and as a human how do you want to act how do you want to step forward who do you want to be and who do you think we collectively as a community should step forward so this is really heightened we're gonna get more into this so we have the chart here and as you can see we have this big grand cross which is uh, between the moon and the sun and pluto and we have homea and jupiter and this is a big thing then we also have another t-square happening with the north node because obviously we always have the south node there but they are square right now to uranus not Uranus, to uh, Venus and Mercury, or not, uh, Mercury and Mars, which are conjunct right now, creating another T. And then we have this minor trine with Saturn, um, Saturn, Jupiter, and Venus. Also just a big aspect that's very interconnected. Uh, all happening while we have the sun just entering Aquarius and the moon in Leo. So, the Leo Aquarius opposition is really balancing like our 
ego and our uh, let's see I have a list highlights our ego and our like social our connectedness our being around other people it's like our heart and our head these energies and how we balance them and finding balance between and you know cohesion is everything aligned are we really fulfilling our hearts desires and living out in this way and how you find balance between like what you think society expects from you and what you think you need to do as a person and then counter you know working that backwards do you step into out into society to create you know are you the person who steps out to create the society in which you want and so it's really finding this balance in those things and calling on you to be the leader of yourself and your community and every you know just being that type of energy that steps out as a leader and says no we're gonna do the right thing we're going to be noble we're gonna be kind we're gonna be all of those things like the mighty lion that you know leo that compassion that beautiful energy we're going to step forward with that and that's going to be what we wash out into the world i guess part of aquarius's energy is when you step forward with your cup and you bring forth your energy to the world are you pouring out ambrosia or are you pouring out destruction and it really asks us that question like what are you stepping out into the world with and so highlighted by that proud leo leo says is that i really what cup what is your cup filled with and if your cup is not filled with this noble is not filled with an energy that you can be proud of leo is going to help you say okay let's find that energy and let's fill your cup with the energy that you can be proud of so you can step out into the world with that so there's a beautiful opportunity to make those changes. So those goals that you made, now is the time to be like, okay, no, I do want to solidify that. I do want to do this. This this is the right energy that I need to step forward with in order to achieve this goal. Which is really, like, it's scary to think about questioning humanity and our responsibility for the role of the world that we live in. And Leo comes in and really says, it's okay. I will help you find this energy that you can be proud of and I'm going to help you step forward with that. Simultaneously, we have Jupiter and Homea at opposition of each other. And Homea is the goddess who can create something out of nothing. She can take fiery ashes and create fertile land. She can bring forth crops from a place where there was nothing. She can create transformation when you didn't see the opportunity she it's just there it just she is that energy that brings the the manifestation out of the void and she is sitting across from jupiter who is calling out this energy but simultaneously asking is questioning you whenever we have something at opposition however they increase each other's energy and they build off of each other they also create like a question of are you honoring your transformation are you allowing this transformation to happen um <coughs> excuse me uh, see i told you i had too many papers Are you allowing this regeneration to happen? Because that's the other part of Homea, is that act of regeneration. Um, I feel very connected, or like that Homea energy is very connected with the Phoenix. Like, we'll turn the old into ashes, we'll burn it away, and from that, something new and beautiful will sprout forth. And Jupiter is really highlighting that and saying, hey, are you allowing this transformation to happen and um, allowing it to be this grand experience that it truly needs to be? And those two oppositions that square with each other are really potent in this we need to wash away that aquarius energy of just cleansing this like pour out 
that cup that you're not proud of and allow it to be filled with this beautiful regenerative energy that is going to allow you to step forward and is going to allow you to create this new self, this new world. And as I've said many times before, if we each as individuals stepped out into the community being the best selves that we are truly proud of, we would see that reflected in the world around us. We would see people helping people. We would see support. We would see understanding. We would see people coming together. <clears throat> and we could really see a change happen because everybody is stepping forward with a behavior that they can be proud of. There's always naysayers or like, there are people who whatever. No, if you ask somebody, are you proud of what you're doing right now? And they say no. Like most people can be honest with themselves. Most people are actually harder on themselves than other people are on them. And if you really truly answered that question, am I proud of who I am and, and the person that I step out to be every morning? Not comparing yourself to other people, not making some weird hierarchy that you've decided in your brain, but no, truly, am I proud of the person that I am? Do I do the right thing? Am I proud of my moral values? Then, and I mean, we recognize, if we recognize that truth, and then everybody was like, okay, I'm not only being honest with myself, but now I see I'm not really proud of these behaviors, so I'm going to stop doing them. And Leo is presenting itself with this great energy. We also have Uranus trine with, um, Uranus trine with Mars and Mercury, which that transformative energy is really like a motivative Mars and Mercury working together in conjunction are like, how do you put those words, thoughts, actions into noble, good, powerful, forward-moving progress? Like it really pushes that through. And it's happening in Capricorn, which is like, how do you, how do, you do this in the right way? Uranus is like, let's do this. <laughs> and then we have this, t you know, Grand Cross, it is really pushing us to look at our lives and see it with real honest eyes and like are we doing the right thing and then how do i step forward so that i am proud of who i am simultaneously we have a t square or yeah t square with the north node and that mercury mars conjunction and the south node and so this this is a really challenge. So these are both really challenging things. This is, I feel like a really, like I said, this is that moment where they're like, here is a glimpse into what is going to be happening over the next year. Here's a glimpse as to what this, the, it's time. It is time to have these moments. So this square with the south node or the north node, which is conjunct to Chiron and Eris, which we've talked a lot about, and that, you know, being this healing truth, integrity, stepping forward, creating this new cycle, and being square to Mars and Mercury, it is like saying, hey, slow down. Are you doing this the right way? Are you caught up in greed and lust and quick success? Or are you really doing this with mindfulness and the right intentions and doing the things that you need to do? Are you really allowing the healing to sink in? Are you allowing these things to happen? Like, slow down. I know it feels like we're rushing through this, but these are deep changes, and you need to make sure that you're doing them in the right way, that energy that you're proud of. Again, it's calling on that. It's really pushing for this understanding that, yeah, you can achieve great things. You can get lots of money and fame and success and all whatever it is that you think is your success. But when you get to the end, if you didn't do it in the right way, you're not going to be fulfilled by that success. I heard the funniest quote. Now I can't even remember where it came from. However, he was saying he went to this place and he was asking the locals, like, what do you do all day? And he's like, oh, I go fishing in the morning and then I come home to spend time with my family with the fish that I caught. And the American was like, if you caught more fish, and you stayed out all day, then you could make enough money to hire somebody else and buy more boats, and then you could open this business, and they talked about this corporate whatever, and then when you got to the end, 
the fisherman was like, okay, well then what would I do with all, like if I made this business and I worked all this time and I did all of these things, he said, well, then you would have time to stay home and hang out with your family. And thinking about that cycle that we have created, is that really the world that we want to live in? And is that really necessary? And this square right here is really questioning that. Is it worth doing all of these things and taking time away from things that are important in order to achieve the su success just so that you can come back around to be in the same place that you were at before? Like, really think, let's think these things through. Let's really think through the value of the actions that we're taking. And is that the, is that, are you proud of it? So, you, I mean, these two strong questions, but they both come back to that same thing. Like, what is your values? Are you fulfilling them? Are you doing the right thing? Are you stepping forward healed? You know, we don't always want to talk about our past, like historically and like all of those things, or sometimes we want to talk about them a lot. Like we're just at this weird place where there are people in the world who don't know about the Holocaust, but then there are also people, like there's just, sometimes it, it rattles my brain. What's important is that we learn from those mistakes and that we make sure we're not repeating them and that we are able to heal and move forward. So this is globally, you know, referring to like wars, and horrible things that happen, but then also like on an interpersonal level, like the way that we treat our family and our friends and our own self-worth, all of that, all connected. Because again, if we individually had that pride and did the right thing and were the person that we should be stepping forward, then it would, you know, now I feel like a broken record. I've said it too many times. But that's what this square and this grand cross are both calling to. They're both really asking, are you someone that you can be proud of? And do your actions and your words and your thoughts and your motivations, is all of that really aligned? And right now is that time to take that. Like, okay, let's, like I said, let's dump out that cup that we're not proud of and let's really fill it up with the things that we are proud of, that we want to step forward. Let's make those choices. Even if they're the hard choices, let's make those choices and let's do the right thing and let's just finally step forward. And then we have this minor trine with Saturn, Jupiter, and Venus, which is bringing in a much softer energy. So this is bringing in an energy of, you know, community and sound judgment. Whenever we have Saturn involved in something, it really is asking you how your actions reflect upon you, the world, your community, everything. And a lot of that karmatic understanding, like being able to see things with hindsight, seeing them from that higher perspective and seeing like, hey, I need to make this better choice because I am going to suffer from these consequences if I don't. And Jupiter encourages that and it really wants you to learn your lessons. It says now is the time to really learn from these lessons that you've had. You might feel stuck. You might have felt like you were stuck for so long and really that comes down to you. These are the lessons. These are the hard lessons that you need to learn. But once you learn them and you understand them, you will step forward with success. It's very lucky. It's a very good, productive you can do it kind of energy, that little sprinkles of amazingness that really helps you succeed. And achieve all of those goals from like a good place. Again, that emphasis on doing the right thing. We are really being called upon that right now. There is no, like you can't just look the other way at this point. I feel like we all are being really called like to hard check. And then now I can do the right thing. I will find success. You know, you don't have to have fast money and, and, and break all the rules or do something wrong. Like we don't have to accept this responsibility. No. We don't have to expect. We don't have to accept this type of behavior in our community. And those people should be held responsible for their actions so that we can step forward and, and do better by ourselves, by our communities, by our world, by the earth. Like there's so many levels of that. Then you have that Jupiter trying to Venus, which is really expanding the, like expanding love, expanding finances, expanding these fruitfulness and reminding us that it's okay to 
be a part of a community to like together we will flourish so all together this is really bringing in increased opportunities increased success this unconditional love and understanding and cooperation and through those things we will find big success so it's that reminder that even though we have these hard questions that we're being asked it's not just you alone you're not the only person you know it's not one spirituality it's not one thing i watch you know science people or very conservative you know people who sometimes i have to skip their videos because i'm like oh today we're just talking about the bible i'm not into that right now but they talk about the same kind of things happening in the community like people are really being asked is this the person that you want to be and we are seeing that reflected all over social media and then it comes right back in your face and you're able to really see the reflection of who you are is that who you want to be and if it's not then change it just make those changes now is that time make the changes be honest about it it's not a time to like delete all the old content delete everything from before and be like it's all gone and now i am this new person no that's a part of who you were these are the lessons that you learned and now it's time to transform and be this new person that you can be proud of that you want to step forward with it's going to help you achieve all of your goals and find all of the success that you want to find in the right way and it's going to be a beautiful thing it's just amazing um, a couple other little things that are going on astrologically are that Jupiter is also trying to Mars and Mercury, bringing in more of this opti optimistic, opportunistic, you know, this is good news. These are good things coming to you. It, it can be really overwhelming to like shake the foundation and ask yourself is this who I'm proud of I know in a couple of videos or might, might have been the last one but what stupid thing do I do every day this is like the other half of that what am I proud of and am I the person that I want that that I'm proud of is that who I am and that's a heavy question so this Jupiter trying to Mars Mercury is really positive it really is like you can be the person you're proud of here are the things you should be proud of. And here is the motivation to step forward with those things. We all bring something beautiful and unique to the table. And anytime someone's like, oh, we all need to be the same or we can nah, all of crazy. I just think of a potluck where everybody bought white bread to dinner. What a boring, boring dinner that would be. We need to have a dinner where every single person brings a unique thing to the table. It adds colors, it adds experience, it adds understanding, connectedness, all of these amazing things that we can do if we come together and we just stop, just come together as proud of who you are. And then we come together with understanding and we understand that for me to be proud of me doesn't mean that you need to be like me in order for you to be proud of you. Because we are each individual unique people we each bring something new and different and amazing to the table. And the only way that we can grow and learn and have more experiences is when we go out and we meet new people who are different to help us see something new and experience something new. So we are really being questioned right now. Are you the person that you want to be? Are you stepping forward proud of who you are? We also still have, sorry, I almost forgot, but we also have Pluto and Neptune still sextile. They're almost out of this, uh, but they, it, that is that pioneer spirit. That is that motivation to step forward in this new self. So we have just this really strong collective energy that really calls to you. And it says, are you bringing forth a person you're proud of? Is this who you want to be? Is this a community we want to live in? Is this the world we want to be in? I think that collectively, as a globe, we can say that there are some major changes that need to be made. And, all right, so let's, let's be real about this on an individual level, on a collective level, on a community, on a whatever levels you want to look at. It's all up and down this pie. There's no place that you can say, oh, 
they don't have to worry about this. This one thing, no, this is on all levels. Is this where we want to be? Is this who we want to be spiritually, culturally, whatever? Are we stepping forward presenting something we can be proud of? I know I just keep saying that, but it's just so strong. So before I say it a hundred more times, make sure I covered everything. I think I did. Everything is so interconnected, like almost more so than normal right now, I feel like, because we have that grand T, grand cross and the T squared and the minor trine. <laughs> There's just a lot like the universe is really telling you right now. It's time to make those transform transformations. It is time to make big changes. It is time to step forward to be the better person and let go of these superficial ideas that we have held on to because whatever reason and be the best person that you can be that you are super proud of be the leader that you think that we all need to be if we all step forward in that place listening and healing and understand all of those amazing things the world would be so much better so yep i think that's everything because really all my notes just keep coming back to that same thing so ask yourself those questions and be honest. The, the only person you're talking to when you ask those questions is you. We're not talking to the news. We're not talking to social media. We're not, we're not, that's not, no. I'm saying when you look in the mirror, are you proud of who you are? And is that who you are? Like, are you who you want to be? And then really be honest with yourself. And then allow this amazing universal energy that we have right now with Homea and Aquarius and Uranus and the moon and Leo that is saying, let me help you fill your cup with exactly what you need so that you can be exactly who you're meant to be. And that's exactly where I want to leave you guys. So I hope you have a fantastic day. I wish you many blessings and that you can present a cup that you're proud of. Many blessings.